Hello everybody, here's my mama and she's gonna be making the angel Easter eggs for y'all today for Easter. Uh, Easter's tomorrow, but we're gonna go ahead and do it today and we're gonna upload it tomorrow. Yeah, and my, hopefully the kids will be here tomorrow. Uh, their dad works different shifts now and uh, don't get to see him as much as we used to until he uh, gets uh, whatever into this uh, work shift that he has now, what he's doing now. And then maybe later on we'll get to see him. But he said he might can get him down here tomorrow evening we'll see <clears throat> yeah, and we're gonna have make a video of them collar and eggs too yeah so uh, a lady uh, from virginia sent me this uh it's called the easter deviled eggs but we call it the angel eggs easter angel eggs and what you do you boil your eggs and then you uh, cut them in half and uh so these are just boiled and yeah. sliced in half and that's it yeah and then you go we're going to fix the collar to put them in uh what you can use uh this kind of coloring, or just regular food coloring, yeah, or the tablets it comes with. Or the with. food tablet pills. Uh, they have red. Uh, I've decided to use these because we have more colors. I don't have very many of them. Uh, we got that, and that's a dark red or something. I should have put the blue in there, but I didn't. That's a green, and the blue should have went in there, but it's going in there. And the orange should be in there. <laughs> yeah, they're all different so, ones, but yeah. I will different ones and you're give me the vinegar and you're supposed to put a teaspoon of vinegar in this yeah and this is the yolks yeah, egg this yolks. is the yolks that we're going to put on them after we uh, collar them i'll fix it up though it says a tablespoon in each one of these so that's what we're going to do And then we'll stir it up and then we'll put our white egg in there. Milton said, you're coloring the white? I said, yeah, it's just food coloring. That's what I said too, I was shocked. <laughs> so, I'm gonna stir these up a little bit. Don't look like it's uh, getting very colorful though, does it? Yeah, they're still dissolving it. Yeah. It might take five minutes or a few minutes for them to fully dissolve. Yeah. I'm gonna mix the collars. This one now, this one done real good. I can still see the tablets down in these ones. It's not uh, fully dissolved yet. Yeah. Yeah, none of them's fully dissolved. Um, uh, it's been years since, uh, I guess when Corey was little, we used to collar eggs all the time. Yeah, that was the last time I remember doing it. I was yeah. probably maybe six or seven yeah something like that it's a long time ago so probably 20 years ago or more i'd say so yeah no but uh, here's our um yolks and what we do we put our salt and pepper in here and i'm just eyeballing it you put whatever you like in it however you like it and she, and i've never done this but she recommends putting a, a sweet relish in it um she says, boil your egg yolks and then put salt, pepper, sweet pickle, relish, mayo, and a drop or two of Texas peat hot. Well, we, we don't have Texas peat. We have that hot sauce there. But I don't use hot sauce. I don't like hot, uh, any kind of hot sauce. And you mix all this together until it's smooth. Somebody sent this from Arizona a long time ago. They sent a package with all kinds of stuff from Arizona in it. And... I tried this hot sauce. I do like it. You can see we've been eating on it, but it is very, very, very hot. It's a uh, habanero pepper. Ooh, I bet that is hot. Yeah, it is really hot. Hotter than most hot sauces that I've tried. Okay, and you just put as much of this as you want in there, which, I, like I said, I've never had sweet relish in mine. I like sweet relish. So we'll try that, and then we got our mayonnaise here. She just eyeballed the relish too, no a certain amount. No. And you just eyeball the the mayonnaise too. Just put it in there and then you start mashing it up and getting it all smooth. This is Kraft's mayonnaise, it's Mama's favorite kind. Yeah. Yeah, I like the Kraft. I like it all. I like the Dukes and the Hellman's yeah, and the Kraft. I like all... the Dukes too. But the, the 
Mayo is more creamier, and I like it in my potato salad and my macaroni salad. So, but you just mix this up like this. We're going to stir that up a little bit more, and I'm going to drop my uh, egg uh, whites down in there. And it says it'll be about 20 minutes before they get collared. So we'll keep checking it, and then we'll come back and uh, show it to you. Uh, from what I remember, you just dip it in there and instantly collars. I don't see how come it's going to take 20 minutes, but well, maybe because it's the inside. See, this ain't even hardly dissolving, is it? Not hardly at all. Let's see if we can get it to dissolve. Maybe we should have made the water a little bit warmer. But I guess it'll die. Yeah, they're getting there. Yeah. So, and then all you do is just drop your eggs in there. I'm going to put two in here. That no. one's a floater. <laughs> a little and egg we'll, boat. We'll put two in here. And we'll see how many we can get in there. I've never done this before. I tell y'all that all the time, don't I? <laughs> it's been a long time since we collared eggs and stuff here, since the, uh, my kids is. Okay, let's see if we can get another one in here. And maybe another one in here. Going down. We don't want to go down. I think we can get about three in there. Maybe four. Let's see. But then we have to stir, don't we? But maybe not. I might not even have it's, to stir them because they're fully submerged. Yeah, and it, uh, the collars are getting deeper too, aren't they? A yeah. deeper collar. And that's what we're going to do. And then when we come back, we'll see what happens. And this is my a relish that we'll put on it. It's the sweet relish, the yolks, mayonnaise, and salt and pepper. Yeah. Now see, the way I fix mine, I just put uh, salt and pepper, mayonnaise, and the vinegar in mine. That's what I put in my uh, yeah, uh, egg yolks. But I thought I've never tried that, and I like sweet relish, so I thought I would try it. And we'll see what we got here. Uh, did you put the vinegar in this, though? Because you just put vinegar in this. I just put vinegar in it. don't cause for vinegar. Oh. She said just uh, boil your egg yolks and use salt and pepper, sweet pickle relish, mayo, and a drop or two of Texas... Um, Pete's hot sauce. Mix all together until smooth. See, I never use none of that. But I ain't gonna use a Texas Pete because it's too hot and we won't eat it. You might. Mm -hmm. Corey might when I won't. But we'll be back in just a little bit and see if we got some pretty Easter eggs here. Yeah. And hopefully the kids will be down tomorrow evening. Uh, we got them a little gift and uh, they'll be collaring eggs and we'll see what... Uh, else we can get them into if they can come. Their dad has to work. To, uh, didn't he say he had to work tomorrow evening too? Yeah. And so he said he'd try to get them down here in between work, so I don't know if it'll happen or not, but we'll see. Yeah, if they come down, we'll show all their Easter egg baskets and we'll show them coloring the eggs. Yeah. The old-fashioned way where you color the shell. Uh -huh. And they might put stickers and stuff on it or whatever they want to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, so... But all our kids is in uh, North and South Carolina. Uh, all the little ones, all except Jonathan's kids, they're here. And uh, so they're up there with uh, their grandkids. Our kids is up there with their grandkids, our, our great grandkids. So uh, they don't come in to, uh, most time in May or somewhere along there in the summertime. They'll come in, we'll have a big dinner and everything. It's been a long time since we all got together, hasn't it? It mountain. Usually one of them's working or something. But when we try to get together, it's always one of them's uh, left behind. He has to work or he can't come or, or something or another, you know. But maybe one day we'll all get together and we'll show you our family. We got a bunch, that's for sure. I think we got about 10 or 12, maybe more than that, great-grandbabies. About how many grandkids? A lot. About 30, I think, maybe more than that. 
I'll have to count it up again and see. But we'll see y'all in, uh, in just a little bit. We'll see how these do and uh, see how pretty they are when we pull them out and put them on the plate. So maybe y'all could do this. And uh, uh, thanks to uh, the lady in Virginia that sent me this because I think they're pretty, the collard eggs like that. All right, and that said it's going to take 20 minutes in here, so we're going to let them set for 20 minutes. Yeah, and we'll be back. And uh, if y'all are still watching out this part of the video, make sure to like and subscribe and share us on Facebook. If you have Facebook, uh -huh. check out the merch shop. The link is in the description of this channel. Yeah. But we love y'all, and we'll be right back in just a second. Yeah, and I'll be reading to you, too. Yeah, make sure to stay tuned, because Mama's going to read a few scriptures for y'all at the end yeah. of this video. Love y'all. Yes, we do. For any new uh, viewers, new subscribers, anybody who hasn't seen it yet, here's the cookbook. I'll let Mama show it to you. Yeah, it's got me and one of my chickens on it. And it says, my mama's secret recipe and love. And that's what my secret recipe is, love. With gravy, it's coffee. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. And uh, then we got we open it up. It's got a plastic binding on it. It's made with um, some kind of shiny paper. It's like a laminated it. almost. Yeah, laminated almost. And there's a story how me and uh, Corey got started in uh, cooking on the YouTube it started with my chickens, and it's got pictures of uh, me and little miss, and me and Corey, and this is Corey when he was a baby with Papa and with me, and there's me and Milton when we started our Sunday message. We did it outside last summer, and uh, we had a hot dog um, community giveaway uh, down at our church, and uh, these were the people that helped me and Corey. And uh, then the rest of it here, uh, it tells the main dishes in it, what all we have in it. You see right here, so. My mama's secret recipe. This tells the um, index of it. I can't read them little ones. Yeah, it's it uh, main dishes, side dishes, and desserts. Yeah, I don't have my glasses on it. But then you just go over through here and, and it uh, shows the main dishes and going over tells you the desserts and stuff, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's just got our recipes in it. Right here is a side dish. This is the, can't read the little writing. It's cat head biscuit recipe. Oh, cat head biscuits. That's my cat head biscuits. That's what the, one of the men called my biscuits in church because I made them so big. And uh, it's got... Um, it's got almost 100 recipes. I think it's got 98 recipes in it. That's why I was going to look on that uh, and see. There's 98 pages, so it's probably close to 98 recipes. Yeah. Because some of the pages are not recipes. You can tell them how many pages on each one. Yeah, it goes, uh, there's, from 9 to 44 is main dishes, 47 to 70 is side dishes, and then 73 to 98 is desserts. So and that's our cookbook. And we're selling them for $30 a piece. Uh, and uh, we'll pay the shipping. We send yeah. it out to y'all and we'll pay the shipping. We throw a tea and a few other extra things in there like cards and bookmarkers and stuff. We put in there extra with it and we pay the shipping and any uh, shipping cost. So it's just $30 for the book and that's it. Yeah. And you could send it in PayPal. Here's the information here. If you wanted to order one, then you could send it to the P.O. box here. You could send money order, a check, cash, whatever you want to send. That's up to you. But you send it to this P.O. box and make sure to put your address on the inside of the card so yep. we can read your address. And we'll send it out to you the next day after we get it. And if you don't have uh, that stuff, if you don't have a way to send it like that, then and you have PayPal or Cash App, if you want to send it this way, that's fine too. You could send it to this PayPal or this Cash App. And as soon as we get it, make sure to put your address in the order whenever you send the money through cash app or paypal you could put your address there and we'll send it out i'll picture it and we'll send it out as soon as we get it all right we're back y'all and uh she's already got these eggs out they was in this stuff here the dye and yeah. she got them all out and put them in this so they would dry a little bit so now we're going to put the, the egg in it the yolk so they're pretty aren't they I'd never done them like this before. But we'll just put our, our egg yolk in it. 
put them in here and make a pretty centerpiece here. It's an edible centerpiece. Yeah, edible. <laughs> yep, it is. The blue done real good. Yeah, all of them's pretty bright, kind of. Yeah. Maybe the yellow is the only one that's not like super bright yellow. Yeah. I believe if it stayed in there a little longer, it would have been, probably. Yeah. So, let's see. Let's put a green one. Yeah, this is, uh, I love the way it done that, the collars and the stuff. I never thought of anything like that. Y'all Milton said, you done that? I said, yeah. He, uh, I said, it's edible, it's just food coloring. There's another pink one in there. It's only got one pink one in there. Oh, it does, don't it? Yeah, they're pretty color. The blue's real pretty. If y'all like that red stuff, I forget what it's called, but you sprinkle it on top of them. Pep, uh, pep, paprika. Yeah, if y'all like a paprika on there, y'all could sprinkle that on the top of it. Yeah. For me, I think that's the best part. It gives it that extra kick that it needs. Yeah. Yeah, I like that too. Some people don't like that though. Yeah. Let us know in the comments if uh, y'all put the paprika on y'all's deviled eggs or angeled eggs or Easter eggs. Yeah, these are our angel eggs. <laughs> there was a lady in church. She she said, you don't call those devil eggs. The devil's not here in this church. <laughs> They're angel eggs. So. But yeah, they turned out real pretty. I should have got a spoon to get the rest of this out. Got one more. I had just enough. But I put a lot on some of them. If I had the spoon, it would uh, go in there right. So. And that is our Easter eggs. Our angel Easter eggs. Right there. I don't know about y'all, but I think they look really nice. Yeah. I think they turned out good. Yeah. They sure did. Uh, now I'm almost going to read a little bit for y'all. Yeah. She's been doing like a one story of the whole, like the Easter story pretty yeah. much of the resurrection. And yeah, she's been going through it, but she's on the, she's going to read the end of it now. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about um, the clothes his clothes that was left in the, the tomb. What it represented, what it meant, you know, and uh, so I'm gonna be reading in um, John 20. It says, Jesus rises from the dead. We'll read that and I was gonna tell you a little bit about his grave clothes. It says, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the scepter and set and seeth the stone taken away from the scepter. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the scepter, and we know not where they have taken him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the scepter. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the scepter. And he stooped down, and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the scepter, and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, uh, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the scepter, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scepter, Scripture, and yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. 
Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the scepter, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the scepter and seeth two angels in in white setting, the one on the head at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they saw, and they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus and standing and knew that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascended, and I ascended unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. So uh, he, is, he was, uh, hadn't ascended yet, but he was getting ready to ascend up into heaven again. But I was wanting to talk about the, the linen claw, uh, clothes. Now, when you're in Israel and you go to a restaurant to eat, uh, if uh, you leave the table for some reason, uh, you wad up the, t uh, the napkin and you lay it down, that means you're through. It, uh, you're through. You know, they can come and clean the table off. But if the napkin is folded a certain way, real neatly and laid down, that means that they're coming back to their table, that they're, they haven't left yet. So that was what the uh, uh, Jesus his, uh, says here about his napkin was laid separate from his other garments, and it was folded up neatly. At that uh, symbol that he was coming back again. You know, I thought that was neat. And uh, in here it says, um, let me see it. As they buried Jesus, Nicomedina, I can't talk this uh, evening, y'all. Nicodemus. Ni yeah, Nicodemus, but over here is where I want to go, the, the grave clothes. It says, the grave clothes were left as if Jesus' body had simply vacated them. The cloth had covered Jesus' head was still folded up in the shape of a head, and it was at about that the right distance from the wrappings uh, that had enveloped Jesus' body. A grave robber wouldn't have left the expensive linings behind and certainly not so neatly. As further proof that the disciples did not fabricate this story, we find that Peter and John were surprised that Jesus was not in the tomb. When John saw the grave clothes looking like an empty cocoon from which Jesus had emerged, he believed that Jesus had risen. It wasn't until after they had seen the empty tomb that they remembered what the scriptures and Jesus had said, he would die, but he would also rise again. And that's what it meant. He was going to rise again. He wasn't dead. He was going to rise again. That's the reason that napkin was folded so neatly there at the head and away from the other linen clothes, you know, the grave clothes. But uh, God is coming back soon, you know, and it foretells it all through the Bible that he's coming back after his people. The people that are ready to follow him, that love him, that's been true and faithful to him, he is coming back for them. So we need to be ready to meet our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, and get out of this old evil world because it's like it's getting evil every day, you know. So uh, we need to be uh, prayed up, read up, and ready to go up when Jesus comes to take us, you know. But uh, right now I want to pray for y'all. We all need prayer. Our nation needs prayer. Israel needs prayer. You know, we need to pray one for another every day, you know because things are getting pretty bad. But one thing about it, if you got Jesus on your side, on your side, he will take you through anything that you may go through. He'll take you through this evil world, you know, and protect you. But God is good and he does love us and he will come back and get us. Amen. Uh, dear Lord Jesus, we just come to you, Lord, just thanking you and loving you, Lord. Uh, well, we thank you for going to the cross and dying for us, for loving us so much, Lord Jesus. Uh, Lord, that you came to earth, Lord Jesus, and died on the cross. And Lord, have risen again, Lord Jesus, and knowing that you're coming back again to get us, Lord Jesus, to be with you. Uh, Lord, ask you to touch each one out there, Lord. Touch them, Lord, whatever their need may be, Lord. Uh, ask you to meet it, Lord. There's so much suffering out there, Lord Jesus, so much sickness, Lord. Uh, Lord, the enemy trying to uh, uh, 
get people disheartened, Lord. Just touch the people, Lord. Let them feel your presence and know, Lord, that you're, you're near them and you'll take care of them. Lord, help us not to listen to the devil, Lord, but put him out of our mind, Lord Jesus, and put him under our feet where he belongs, Lord. Uh, Lord, strengthen your people, Lord. Help us to hold on to you and not to give up, Lord. Uh, knowing one day you'll be here to get us, Lord Jesus. Uh, and we won't be in this old sinful world no more, Lord, but we'll be in a paradise, Lord Jesus, where there's always peace, love, and joy, Lord. Uh, Lord, in your mighty name, Lord, uh, put your arms around your people, Lord Jesus, and let them feel your presence, knowing that you're coming back to get them one day, Lord. Um, Lord, have your way in all things, Lord, and help us to always to hold on to you and to be true and faithful to you in all things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, I love the Lord, and I thank the Lord for his love and his mercy, you know, for dying on a cross for our sins, you know, so we could go and be with him, you know. So if you don't know the Lord, you need to get ready. You need to give your heart to him and get ready because he is coming back, and you sure don't want to go to a devil's hell. You know, if you find the Lord, if you give your heart to the Lord, all you have is love and joy and peace in your heart. No matter what comes your way, there's always peace there, you know. But when you're out in sin, it's just heartache and trouble all the time. Seems like trouble on every hand. But when you know the Lord, he takes care of our situations, you know, no matter what they are. He takes care of them. So I hope y'all have a good Easter. Hope you get to go to Sunday school in the morning and uh, just uh, reverence the Lord and and know that this is the Lord's day and that, God, that Jesus has risen and he's coming back for us. You know, just love him. So we'll see you in the next one. And uh, pray that you have a good Easter with your family and uh, have a good time in Amen. the Lord in Sunday school in the morning. Because we're planning on having a good time in the Lord tomorrow. You know. So y'all have a good evening. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Well, I guess that's all for this one. May I'll make sure to like and subscribe. And leave a comment. Share us to Facebook if, if you want to. Yeah. We love y'all. And God bless y'all. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Amen.